A combined footing usually supports two columns. The use of a combined footing may be justified when the distance between columns is short so that a large excavation can be avoided. When the distance between columns is larger, say, than 15 feet, it's probably better to design a strap footing instead. But how do you actually calculate the bearing pressures on, on the uh, combined footing? And what are the factors that affect the size and shape of a combined footing implant? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss how to calculate the bearing pressures under a combined footing. Let's get started. There are two common scenarios in practice where the use of a combined footing can be justified. One is when the property line exists close by the, an exterior column, as in this case. So a, a normal isolated spread footing would be eccentric and would tend to tilt and overturn. So this problem can be prevented by supporting this exterior column together with the adjacent interior column in a building in a common footing. It's called a combined footing. The second scenario is when two columns are so close to each other in practice that uh, individual spread footings in each column would uh, overlap. In that case, it's better just to use a combined footing for both. But what are the factors that affect the footing geometry, the size and the shape of the footing? When the lots and the two columns are about of the same order of magnitude, the bearing pressure is about uniform and differential settlement can be prevented. However, there are cases where one column load is much heavier than the other, and in that case, the footing can be designed as a trapezoidal in order to keep the pressures uniform, as in this case. Usually, the combined footings are rectangular for uh, construction simplicity. However, when the available space is limited at the field, due to the presence of uh, other existing footings or underground piping or other obstructions, then a trapezoidal footing may be the only option. In any case, the calculation of the bearing pressure would be affected. So let's go ahead and discuss the calculation of the uh, bearing pressures under a combined footing. The calculation of the bearing pressures is relatively simple for a rectangular footing, particularly if it's in, in full bearing but it's uh, more complicated when uh, the footing is trapezoidal for obvious reasons due to the irregular uh, geometry. Furthermore, the calculation is more cumbersome and time-consuming when the trapezoidal footing is in partial bedding, as in this case, basically because the soil cannot resist any tension and uh, the location of the zero stress line is, is unknown. The bearing pressure depends on the shape of the bearing area, but the bearing area in turn depends on the location of the centroid of the bearing volume, and the bearing volume depends also on the maximum bearing stress. So this is like a vicious circle that one parameter depends on the other. So how do you solve this problem? So one solution would be multiple trial and error cycles until finally the applied load equals the bearing volume and also the location of the load coincides with the centroid of the volume. This procedure is obviously unpractical and time consuming, so another alternative is, is necessary to design these kind of footings. As the foundation uses an algorithm consisting on double integrals uh, to calculate the volume of the bearing pressures, and that equals to P, which is the applied load. On the other hand, the centroid of the bearing volume is calculated also as a double integral of the moment of the volume divided by the force, P. And that equals the location of the applied load on the footing. The resulting solution is applicable to any footing geometry, either in full bearing or in partial bearing. To illustrate how to calculate the bearing pressure, I have prepared an example of a typical combined footing in as deep foundation. This is a trapezoidal combined footing. The distance between columns is 14 feet. If we go to the loads tab, 
I have applied some load, 70 kips in the exterior column, 110 kips in the interior column. So this load is heavier than the exterior load. If we use a trapezoidal footing 4 feet in the exterior end and 7 feet in the interior end, the resulting bearing pressure is about uniform, 2 KSF in this end and 2.4 KSF at this end. So it's in the same order of magnitude, so we cannot expect a differential settlement here. Now, if the footing were rectangular instead of trapezoidal, what would happen? Well, we can see that easily here in the foundation. For example, if, if instead of 4 and 7, you know, the, the, the dimensions at the ends, it's, say, for example, a rectangular 5 feet, and five in at the other end as well. Now the, now the footing is rectangular. It's much easier to build something like this. But look at the bearing pressure. Here is 1.7 and here is 3.2. So if we go to our glance tab, the allowable bearing pressure is 2.5, maximum bearing pressure is 3.2. So we are over. So we need more area of footing to reduce the bearing pressure. For example, if we increase that to 6 and 6 to keep it rectangular, we are still over for a, a little bit, 2.7 versus 2.5. If we go to the graph tab, we can see here the resulting bearing pressures, 1.4 versus 2.7. That's why sometimes it's recommended to design a trapezoidal footing instead of a rectangular footing. In this case, probably this is acceptable. The difference is not that much. But if, if, for example, this load were more than that, let's go to the loads. Let's increase that to 150 kips. So the difference now is substantial, 4 KSF here and 0 0.9 in the other end. Here probably would be much better to design a, a trapezoidal footing. Let's go back to the original load, 110. And the dimension that was 7 here. With this configuration, it's about uniform, so we can keep these dimensions. If we go to the at a glance tab, we can see that the bearing pressure is under the allowable, so it's acceptable. We go here to the shear area, we can see that it's very well optimized, 0.96, so we cannot reduce the thickness anymore. And if we go to the reinforcement at the footings, it's, it's also well optimized. So it's okay. And the longitudinal reinforcement is also 0.85. So it's a very good configuration uh, of, of this footing. It's well optimized. If we go to the graph tab, here we see the bearing pressure, but here we can see the diagrams, the shear diagram and the moment diagram of this footing. And if we go to the construction tab, and we can see here the rebars that we specified to resist the bending moment. With this, we conclude the presentation of the calculation of the bearing pressures under a combined footing. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.